What's up, what's up, good people? Welcome into Montgomery and Company. I'm Renee Montgomery. So, John Morant, we all know the situation. We've been talking about it, so I'm going to give my thoughts. But overall, I really hope we put our arms around him as a community. And right now, I'm talking right now, it is March Madness, an experience like no other. So, me and the crew, we're going to go through the moments that happened during March Madness in my career, my freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year at UConn. We're going to talk about the moments within the big moment because that's really what shapes those kind of experiences players are going to have feelings that they've never felt before they're going to have the excitement right now that's nothing like it it's called march madness for a reason let the madness begin baby let's go remember when netflix was a dvd service well now netflix had its first live comedy show selective outrage by chris rock i'm sure that you've heard that it dropped because there was a lot of discussion online about it but i want to talk a little bit about the money because chris rock made a pretty penny off of signing a two special deal for 20 million dollars a piece for netflix this was the second one his first one came out in 2018 but yeah selective outrage was streamed live when he performed it which is a new concept that we might start seeing for concerts you know comedians different things any acts now that netflix has saw that you can basically stream it live and we can all watch it together like live tv i feel like that's gonna happen more so chris rock has set the tone in that aspect and speaking of setting the tone shouts to kennesaw state for making their first ever ncaa tournament appearance my baby went there serena is an alum of that school so i had to shout them out and we're going to just keep going with the first because monique billings was the first WNBA a player to partner with Athleta or Athleta. I don't know which actually which one it says, so I want to make sure I say it right, but Monique Billings was the first WNBA player to partner with them. Sports influences everything. We know that already. Shouts to Atlanta influences everything. And then speaking of first, EA Sports and the NWSL reached an agreement on bringing the Women's League to a video game for the first time ever. NWSL is coming to EA Sports FIFA on March 15th. Now that's crazy because FIFA, I mean, I think of Chad Ocho Cinco and all the different people that love to play FIFA so that's going to be huge for the NWSL and then keeping on with the women's sports and doing big things shouts to Nas and AG for playing great at Athletes Unlimited I'm talking MVP type numbers we love to see it and also in WNBA news WNBA Las Vegas Aces star Kelsey Plum got married okay congratulations are in order she married the Raiders tight end Darren Waller folks were stunned I like how she did it like me and Serena we got married during a pandemic announced it a couple years later so man actually a year later but man I'm just telling you there, there's a lot going on oh and also the Oscars are coming up and Rihanna will be performing Jimmy Kimmel is hosting live from LA Woo, a lot a lot a lot um what else what else Creed 3, oh yeah, we got to shout out Creed 3 because we talked about the premiere that we went to, but Creed 3 becomes the first sports film in history to surpass $100 million in its opening weekend globally. We tried to tell y'all that Creed 3 was going to do numbers. You could just see Michael B. Jordan put the time in, put the work in, and the movie's just excellent. Sports really does influence everything, and that's what brings me to John Moran. First of all, I love John Moran, and I'm not even saying that just so I can go in on him at a later time. I'm basically saying I love John Moran, his energy, his spirit. I love his interactions with his daughter i love how he puts women in his commercials and he's big friends with asia wilson and he then you know like i just love everything about how he supports women's sports how he plays as a player i think he plays and does things that we haven't really seen before at the pace that he's done it in a sense of he's a showstopper he's a superstar he is all of those things so that's why this situation with john morant just really it just makes me sad and so if you don't know what's happened there's been alleged events that's happened with john morant leading up to this event but this particular event basically John Morant showed a weapon online on his own Instagram live um you know he's since 
made a statement that says, I take full responsibility for my actions last night. I'm sorry to my family, teammates, coaches, fans, partners, the city of Memphis, and the entire Grizzlies organization for letting you down. I'm going to take some time away to get help and work on learning better methods of dealing with my stress and my overall well-being. So when I read that message, that reads to me exactly what the situation is. A young man that has a lot of money and also a lot of stress that goes with his job and different things of that nature news flash to people that may not know it is very stressful being an athlete now no it's not life or death situations that other stressful jobs may have so i do understand that there's jobs that your life or death could depend on how well you perform or not making mistakes or not but when you talk about sports when there's stress added imagine if you go to your job and you have a bad day at work like we've all went to the to the office and had a bad day right but then imagine when you leave the office and you're going back home and you want to forget about everything that happened at work and then you go online to see everyone talking about how bad of a day you had at work that's basically an athlete's plight and yeah i know they're playing a game and they're making a lot of money but athletes have trauma that they have came from in their previous life before they made this money they have situations that they may have not gotten over so when i heard john moran's statement i thought first thing i thought is i hope he does get the the help he needs and then I went on to read, you know, different people's comments and the sports world really showed up for Ja Morant. A lot of people had a lot of things to say. Des Bryant, former Cowboys player said, if you know and love Ja Morant, put your arms around him and tell him the truth. Ja, you got a special ability and don't let people around you basically bring you down. And then another player that came and spoke about him was Jalen Rose, and he's an NBA legend. He said, I am John ja Morant. I've been involved in drug raids. I've survived assassination attempts. I've been the undisciplined young person that was trying to figure out how to be famous, how to be successful. He's going to return, and he's going to be a better person. That's my whole thoughts right there in a sense of there is going to be a return, a, a return for John ja Morant. And I hope that we can let him get past it. Yes, I understand that this is a pattern going on this is not an isolated incident but i hope that all of these incidents lets him realize that you got a whole group of people depending on you your daughter depending on you you're a son you're a father you're a superstar you're a role model and this is a thing that gets into it with a lot of athletes because we've heard athletes say i'm nobody's role model but unfortunately that's why they say heavy is the head that wears the crown because we all are role models whether we want to or not now paul pierce had some different things to say in a sense of he said i don't care what y'all say about ja i carried a gun after i was stabbed y'all don't know what he's going through Everyone has something to say until you really know what's going on in someone's life. When you black and rich, you're a target, period. So there's so many different thoughts on the Job ja Morant situation, the feelings that people have. The thing that makes me think about, I don't know if people know, but there's a player that plays for Alabama and his name is Brandon Miller. He's extremely talented. They think he's going to be a lottery pick in the NBA draft. And he was recently attached to an incident involving a gun where a woman lost her life now he was cleared of any wrongdoing by the system but there's a part of a lot of people that feel like something just doesn't feel right now moving forward he's been not included in the finalist list for the the player of the year awards even though his stats say that he should be included in that list and so that brings me back to my thoughts for john morant because unfortunately for brandon miller That incident caused someone to lose their life. But with John Morant's situation, no one has lost their life yet. No, nothing has happened. I'm not even saying yet because I pray nothing ever happens. But we're at a point where John Morant should be able to turn the corner, get the help he needs, and get back on the right track of being a superstar that has a shoe that just released. That is a great shoe. He's The city is behind him. The league is behind him. He's one of the faces of the league. But somebody around John Morant has to put their arms around him and make sure that he understands who he is. You know, you are no longer the John Morant that you knew before. You are Ja Morant that we are all talking about. And so, you know, I just hope that he can get a clean slate. I just hope that for all these athletes, we talk about sports influences everything, and it really does. What happens in athletics, what happens in sports is world news. It goes all over the world. And so as athletes, we have to start understanding that. Did anybody see the Chris Rock special? Hey, I loved it. I loved it. I haven't even, I haven't watched it yet. So you, you saw half of it, Juju? What you thought about it? I don't think it deserved the criticism that it's getting from some people. It's like people saying that they watched the whole thing and didn't smile once. I wouldn't take it that far because I was I chuckling. Laughed. 
laughed. Right, I was like, I laughed, I laughed at some I uncomfortable laughed. moments. I, it was some I uncomfortable have to, stuff. I, have to be honest, I, like, I laughed. I laughed at some of that stuff. I laughed. I laughed. Right, I that's what it is. It was made folks uncomfortable, but it was really? funny as hell. Like, <laughs> okay, yeah. so so Chris Rock was Chris Rock, and and he he made the uncomfortable jokes, but he was. I mean, I guess I guess you know comedy and, and, is you know with subjective. comedians you have to kind of read between the lines. Like when he said that he hadn't been, uh, don't be looking at him because he hadn't been in any entanglements. <laughs> so you know, yeah, it, it, I think it was in a way saying you know please look at poor Will. He was going through a lot, you know. And, this is why you don't not watch something and go on the internet because I've done seen everything there is to see about this special that I haven't seen. So I could give y'all the rundown on what everybody's views is because a lot of people think that Chris Rock's special was not funny at all. He's, he took a lot of time to say the obvious things that we all knew he was going to say. He called Will out of his name. Um, he did a lot of... He, yeah, he exactly. He did. He brought up the entanglement, which everybody said that was going to be a, like Snook. You brought it up, but you like it, Snook. You're easy target. So people basically said that was an easy comedy show to do. The people that didn't like it and didn't laugh at all. And then the people that did like it said that, what did you expect the man to do? He got slapped on national television. Of course, he's going to come back and call the man out of his name. And he filmed it in Baltimore in Jada City. And so, you know, like, I mean, so there's. <sighs> There was two Let's, sides can of the coin. I ask point. a question? What's I, up, I Cole? Because I, I, I obviously have not watched. I have seen some people talking about it online. But the man has been touring since the, probably almost the day after he got slapped. I mean, he might not have very much new to go by for this. I mean, I'm just it's saying. His, we it's expected. his life. It's his feelings. I mean, that's what comedians do, right, Nick? That's what they, they do. I mean, they talk and, about their life. And yeah, it's but still, I'm just... I mean, he's probably still feeling it. I'm, su- I'm sure. I just got to say that by now and all the money that has lined and padded <laughs> his pocket, he should be over <laughs> any humiliation, any self-degradation that he had. When them checks start hitting his pocket, I'm pretty sure instead of him, you know, being mad about such a way, he was like, hey, I... And, and, as a comedian, he would probably also appreciate me saying, hey, <laughs> it's a good thing I got slapped because I only made $10 million last year. I made $10 million in two weeks. Chris Rock was doing comedy shows. To Cole's point, those comedy shows were sold out. I'm sure he was working on the material that now was on his Netflix special that aired live called Selective Outrage. That was the second special on a two special deal that he did with Netflix. $20 million apiece. The first $20 million one came out in 2018 and then this second one came out as we know right now um selective outrage so that was a two-part deal so he just finished up his deal with netflix but a lot of people that's what to cole's point she was saying he's making money on his way there but a lot of people said dang like that was that's what you came up with like basically you had a whole year to come up with the material and i'm not like i'm not on either side of the coin because i don't really care but 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 what was it going to be called if he didn't get slapped no, they they're saying like, man, we thought you could have came up with some funny material. No, basically. what I'm saying is this is a two part deal with Netflix. The first one's in 2018. What was going to be the content for this one? It's called selective outrage. Well, I'm just saying, uh, yes, like this gave him material, and that's the point. People thought, like like Juju said, some people said they didn't smile the whole time, and they thought, dang, you had a lot of material to work with to get some funny content with. Did anyone else here know he had a first part to this in 2018? Well, he had two specials. It's called two specials. Like, you signed a deal. I'm going to do two. So he, you just come up, you know, like, that's like saying, Kevin Hart, what are you going to go on tour about next year if you don't have any material? You just make it up. I don't know. You talk about your dad. You talk about your life, your upbringing. What I'm saying is, is that did anyone on here ever see the first part? <laughs> I think we did. Yeah, when it came out in 2018, yeah. I'm thinking, like, I would love to see what the reviews were for the 2018 one and what the reviews are for the tw- this 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 new one. I mean, I'm pretty sure... The numbers it- probably were there, to your point. But And this was the first ever live-streamed comedy show for netflix netflix is usually like you know they don't do things live they're not usually live television but this is the first time that they streamed a live comedy show which as you can assume is probably going to be more of this live streaming concerts in a world where people are living in their home basically or people are not necessarily going to events like they used to it's coming back 
I can see this kind of being a lane for Netflix, kind of trying to get into a different lane. Is anybody talking about well, the other? Weren't there other, other acts? Wasn't Kevin the Hart slab, there? Weren't so there other other acts in this one? Or something. was that something yeah. else that I saw? Kareem so, Abdul Jabbar so. cutting the rug on stage. Just, just so, like, what? so why isn't anybody talking about? That's what I'm saying. There's so much. We got to watch this as a show. We got to do a review. So Chris Rock's 2018 special, Rotten Tomatoes gave it an overall rating of 100% based on 23 reviews with an average rate of 7.5 out of 10. But what did you just say? I don't know because it was only it was based on 23 reviews. That's probably the only 23 people to watch it. But did you say it got 100% though? Yeah, Rotten Tomatoes is a group that rates movies. Right, you know, right, like but I'm just they saying can, they gave them 100, 100%. Yeah, they gave them 100%. All right, so speaking of like just making the news, being in the news, I wanted to ask you guys what you thought or who you thought was the most Googled black women in 2022 because the list just came out. And I found it very interesting because I didn't- <laughs> Rachel Dolezal. Ah! <laughs> she did not make the list, Juju. So who do you think the number one most Googled black- <laughs> Rachel Dolezal is the the woman, the president of the NAACP uh, that chapter we found out in was, Seattle. Uh, yeah, that she is actually uh, not black. Caucasian Mor- queen. Yeah. Yeah. Mor- black. Maury know, style, you are not. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so here we here we go. The first, the most Googled black woman of 2022. Any guesses from the crew? Who y'all think was the most Googled black woman of 2022? Kamala Harris. I just spell Michelle Obama. Boom. That would have been my first guess. Michelle Obama is not the first, uh, the most Googled black woman. Angela Bassett. Er- oh, the woman king. <laughs> Ooh, Viola, yeah. Oh, Viola, Davis. Davis. <laughs> Viola Davis, my woman king. What about Octavia Spencer? All right, so Spencer. the most... Mm. I like one. that y'all thought that, but the most Googled black woman of 2022, Zendaya. Ooh. Number one, oh. Zendaya. Oh. Come sense. on now, y'all know this woman was on Spider-Man. She's dating the Spider-Man in real life. This is like, <laughs> come on now, you can't top that. And, right, she, number- and she about to be making a million off an of episode for Euphoria. Yes, she just yeah. renegotiated her contract for Euphoria. You guys, the viral show. She is yeah, going to make, be making one million per episode. I heard that the Friends yes. cast was making one million per episode at a yeah. certain point. So mm-hmm. she yeah. making money, honey. She not even just Googled. She's shutting down red carpets and making money. She made the best decision of her career in the world a couple of years ago. Because they have cast her to play Aaliyah in that weak, whack docu-series about Aaliyah that the family didn't like. And she pulled out of it and then started doing start doing uh, her own thing. And now look at her. Spider-Man and everything. I can, I can see why they would cast her as that because she could dance. Oh, and uh, yeah, I, I, she, she would have been a great fit for that. But I do think that that, that was a smart decision on her move on her side. Number two. Who do y'all think came in at number two the most Googled? Beyonce. Michelle Obama. Beyonce. I'm thinking she's still on there. Top five. <laughs> Doja Cat. <laughs> hey, that, that's a good one. I what love about that he thought he Harris? had it. The second most Janelle Googled Monet. woman. Oh, the second Ooh. most Googled woman, Serena Williams. Come on now. Oh, wow. Okay. Coming yeah. off of her uh, Damn, retirement. Right. Y'all know that that was a big year for mm-hmm. her. She's in commercials. Number three. I know y'all ain't going to get number three now. I'm ready for y'all to be shocked. You Michelle just tell Obama. You. Uh, Solange. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Solange knows. Okay, no, but I like that. That's creative. Cole, no any idea. thoughts? I have no Number idea. Number three, Meghan Markle. Oh, wow. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Salute to Meghan Markle. I was going to say, what's that reaction? <laughs> that don't be hating me. <laughs> All right, so oh, moving sorry, on Snow. to Number... Sorry, Snow. Okay, don't be hating me. It was a haterade in my blood. Sorry, Snow. You, right. <laughs> you just got it out. You got it out. All right, so I moving on to... Okay, because... <laughs> <'cause... laughs> Man. Number four. <laughs> Who do we think is number four on the list? Now y'all should understand that Google ain't what y'all think Google's gonna be. I know. I'm scared. Michelle I know. Obama. Uh, AOC. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one too. <laughs> number uh, four. Black China. Go- I don't know. Oh, black China. <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Please tell me not. <laughs> Please tell me we are not interested in what she's doing. This right ain't now. only fans because y'all know that Black China is making a bag over there at OnlyFans, though. So shouts to Black China getting to the Black money. China or Cardi. What about Cardi B? Yeah, y'all both yeah. mm. Oh, number- I know Rihanna. She had a baby. Rihanna. That's a that's a good one. <laughs> I love that folks 
to be thinking they got it. <laughs> the number four most Googled want black woman, Beyonce. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. She was on the list. You're right, Cole. Baby. I told you she was going to be in the top five. Yes. <laughs> and no. bringing Queen. in the fifth of the top five most Googled black woman. Come on now. Michelle, Michelle Obama. Obama. Michelle Obama. <laughs> <laughs> I was waiting because Snook said it every time. Every single one. She said <laughs> Michelle Obama. Michelle Obama. All right, so I just wanted to get y'all up to date on, it's crazy to see like what who we might think is going to be in the news all the time might just be our news because I would have thought Cardi B would have been up there. And moving on to, I want to hear your guys' thoughts on this because Not just your thoughts on this, but your thoughts on what would you do? What's your scariest moment? All right. So there was an article that was released. A couple files $5 million lawsuit against a snorkeling company. Now, here's why. Let me just set the table. You're snorkeling on your Hawaiian vacation and the tour company leaves you behind. That's what happened to a couple during their 2021 honeymoon in Hawaii. They were going for a snorkeling lesson excursion and the boat just straight up leaves them in in the ocean by themselves as they're trying to figure. So that's a, a fear that I didn't even know I had until I read that that's what happened to these folks. So it just, first of all, what are they doing by leaving people there? $5 million is a lot. They deserve that money. But do you guys have any unreasonable fears? Like fears that aren't just normal? What's your thoughts? A fear for me is not asking the right questions and ending up in this situation, regardless of where it is. We could be in the middle of the water. We could be on a mountain with bears in the cave next door. We could be in a desert with no signal. My fear is not asking the proper questions because the article clearly said, oh, we're going to be out here for an hour, but they gave no definite time. Who goes down underwater away from the boat for a full hour? I would be so paranoid, so paranoid. You got five good minutes. I'm going down. I'm coming back up. I'm going down. I'm coming back up. First of all, Serena, when we went on our excursions at our honeymoon, you didn't have a clue what was happening at no, no time. No, but look, I, I literally told Renee, I said, nope, we're not doing none of these activities because there's too many <laughs> horror stories out here. We're not going to be one of these people that went on our honeymoon and got caught or stuck anywhere. Nope. We're just playing it <laughs> safe and staying on land the whole time. What is What did y'all go for your honeymoon? <laughs> We went uh, to St. Lucia. St. Lucia. We went to the St. Jane Ooh. Mountain, but we did do boat excursions. This is what I'm trying to say. We did one. And, and, and it was, and he asked us, do we want to jump off the boat? Snook, can you hear me? <laughs> <laughs> she, look, look, she trying to say no. <laughs> she told me no. I can't hear you. <laughs> <laughs> she trying to say no. We went on a boat excursion. It was a private boat because I also, I don't know if y'all seen White Lotus, but I don't want nobody else on our boat with us because a person could be going through something on White Lotus. The lady was burying her parents and throwing the ashes off of there. And we trying to have a honeymoon dinner and she over there having a funeral. So I watched White Lotus. She was like, she was like, move move this table, y'all. Move this table. (laughs) Yeah, so, she, she was third wheeling. Uh, that was hilarious. Uh-huh. So uh-huh. I learned my lessons from White Lotus. We was on an excursion by ourselves, and this man gonna ask us, "Do we want to jump off the boat into the water?" <laughs> I, I, I said no so quick. I said no, no, no. We're good. Thank you. So no. it's a no for us, dog. Oh, I'm gonna tell no. you that uh-huh. right now. I'm feeling good on the boat. We even had the nerve to try to go down into the under part of the boat. It was nice under there. But we got sick as a dog real quick when we got down there. I said, take our food back up to the top. Can't do it. So that brings me to (laughs) my real fear. I have a, it's called tripophobia. Do y'all know what tripophobia is? Uh Uh-uh. Bumps. Fear of bumps. Oh, wow. Snook. Snook. So I have a fear of things that have too many bumps on it or like little bitty things that have like those little lumps. I don't know if y'all know what I'm, do y'all know what I'm talking this about? This is like, true. I can not tell. Like the areola? The- <laughs> <laughs> I don't mind bumps on the areola, but if it's like the whole, if like, let's think of like a Like creature. I remember Doja Cat on the red carpet. Doja that whole Cat red on outfit. the red carpet. Do y'all Renee remember? couldn't even look at that outfit. Because to this point of fears, I didn't know was a fear. Those type of things, if somebody has that, like, if those little legion bumps all over everything, Ooh. I Ugh. can't handle it. But <laughs> I, I have a friend, you know, I have a friend and my girls have never understood her phobia. Oh, she throws up when she sees safety pins. Yes. yes. Aunt Barbara. Oh, wow. Aunt Barbara. Aunt Barbara, if you show that's, a safety pin to her, she crazy. will she instantly throw up. She I just... Up. 
She has a fear, a terrible wow. fear. I wonder what that fear is called. Fear. fear of needles or pins. I wonder what what that is. I haven't encountered something that literally takes me out. It actually makes it kind of crazy because mom said her fear is heights, but she used to ride roller coasters with me all the time. Yeah, so, so it's like, like your fear used to be heights, but you ride roller coasters. I stopped, I stopped riding them many, many years ago, and they never were really good for me. I remember the last one. <laughs> she Nikki probably did it as a daredevil about... thing. Did you do it like to get over your fear? Kind of like how Renee oh, did skydiving? Just because my girls wanted me to go on there. And as Nikki can tell you, from when I got off the roller coaster, the, the operator asked me, did, I need to, did he need to call an ambulance? I was sick. Sick, very, very sick, and had to immediately go to the bathroom. Even I'm immediately good. <laughs> go to the bathroom. I'm good on roller coasters. I used to ride them, but it's kind of like Snook. I only rode them because I was riding the wave of being with everybody, but I hated every moment of it. I I hated myself on the way going up because I knew that I had to get down, and then I knew that once I got up there at the top, and they was gonna sit me up there to let me think about my out. Yes, they let me think about my decisions. They sit you there at the top of the roller coaster for that split two seconds before they drop that thing on you. <laughs> and I, that's, I see, like it too. That's where I lose my whole mind. Mm-hmm. It's like, why am I here? I don't want this drop part. Mm-hmm. I can't scream. I can't breathe. I can't take it. Why am I here? Well, listen, well, you know, we went to Cedar Point. There's a, um, there, there's a roller coaster there called the Speedster, I believe. And once you drop, your face is like frozen. When you get off, by the time you stop. Mm-mm. 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 Nah, and, and have you guys seen all these uh, horror videos of the people like roller coasters going off the, the rails and all that stuff? Um, it's especially all these, at these fairs. They're uh-uh. all these. That's what I'm trying to say. If you go to a fair I mean, it's the writings is on the wall. I know that like, it's like those things look old. They sound old when there's rooming past you. <clears throat> I would enjoy the food at the fair because I'm just saying like, that's, I, I don't even do them no more. No, I, I, I just think the fairs are different. I don't think you should get on anything that crazy to people who put it up in one day and it's supposed to carry two tons worth of people. It goes 75 miles an hour. So I'm not saying necessarily fairs you should do, but I like roller coasters. Like I said, I haven't encountered anything that's literally just gripped me that I've been like, I can't go on and lord please don't let me encounter it now that i've said it but i do i do have a fear of being just just making simple mistakes like going to like i could i'll be so i would be so upset with myself if i went into the woods and we pack up a camp next to a, a house full of bears and it's like well why didn't i know that there were bears out here like that's the type of stuff Cole, that is a fear camp, for me you're scared of nature that's because the I'm real fear is of, the bears no 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 i'm scared of animals houses we don't that's their house i don't want to be in their house i'm scared of putting myself in a situation where i'm in their house that to <laughs> me is my fear <laughs> all right so listen Work, if y'all got any other fears, what were you gonna say? I'm kind of, I'm kind of the same with uh, with with Cole. Like sharks, I don't know why sharks have always been like just anything with sharks. I can't even imagine that I'm in a pool and like, when people play shark, like I'd be like, no, no, stop playing. <laughs> I, don't, I, I can't, I can't. Games. No, but but like I guess ever since the social media age and and Zoom age, pandemic age, people have been uh, caught on Zooms and, and like like when they don't know they're being recorded or have gone live and things like that That's without them one. knowing that they've gone live and they're using the bathroom or they're naked or they're doing, if you're not meant to go live, you're probably doing something that you don't want anybody to see, you know? So that's probably a fear. It's well, like, you got a valid fear because I sit in this room a lot and I'm literally live yeah, yeah. on TV a lot from right here. So you could be yelling something from the room that you really don't don't want the whole world that like you got kind of that's a realistic fear because we're married so we we share everything with each other so we, sometimes you know that that just got to stay between us and if and if i accidentally go live that will be mm. mortifying for me if i don't want it to the real wild, the real wild card is junior <laughs> that's the wild card watch Fact. out for junior yes. i'll be having to tell that video listen yeah. i'll be having to tell that boy that once it hits the internet it is not leaving the yep. internet ever mm-hmm. it don't matter mm-hmm. how fast you delete it 
Nothing, nothing, nothing. I was saying to mom's point, I had that situation. And to Sam's point, I've had that situation where Vance got a phone and it has <laughs> FaceTime on it. And oh so boy. he comes into my room to ask me a question about whether he could play on the video game with his mm. cousin, AJ. And he's on FaceTime. And I am literally <laughs> down to my skimmies when I say, oh, and no. I turn around and he's under me. So, you know, that is a oh, probably no. a shot that, oh, that most God. kids should not see. <laughs> So I, when he was holding the phone, he was just holding the phone. And luckily it wasn't pointed towards me. So he's like, Ma, can I play the game? And I said, well, I said, wait a minute. Just, I said, give me a second. Let me get dressed. And then I hear a noise coming from the phone. That sounds like background noise. I said, is oh somebody on the phone? Oh he's like, my yeah, ages. I said, get That's out. A That's a fact. And on that <laughs> note, to close all of that up, don't be calling me on Facebook without FaceTime without scheduling an appointment. Folks just be popping up on FaceTime with me. And I'm like, no, sir, that is too too intimate i could be on the ca- like there ain't no telling my biggest fear is being <laughs> locked in the trunk bro i've been around <laughs> too many hood guys and my life so is Juju's better fear now is getting kidnapped <laughs> don't not lock me in the trunk or bury me alive i would rather oh, okay. die that's a real fear though uh-uh. i can't even just imagine. kill me bro Listen, so you think that the trunk okay so that's a very valid i don't want to be locked in the trunk either i don't want to be buried alive either it's just not one of my fears though because i feel like it's so unrealistic but for you you were like listen i would rather any other way of death than those ways wow it's so scary wow i've been there before it's not fun so things we didn't know that we're afraid of that now we now know we're afraid of. Moving on, moving on, Snookabooka. So I asked Snookabooka over the weekend to put her thinking cap on because Snook knows my life way better than I know my life. So Snookabooka, I asked her, I went to UConn, as everyone knows. I was graduated high school 05, graduated UConn 09. So from that, okay, hey. she wore her UConn gear. <laughs> hey. like that. So from 05 to 09, I've created so many March memories, so many that I can't even probably remember them, but it's always better because I'm usually in the moment. So if we got a game coming up, that's literally all I'm thinking about. I ain't thinking about all the other things that go on or all the other moments. So I told Snook if she could, could she think of a couple of moments from my freshman, sophomore, junior, senior year to relive so that we could talk about it here on the pod? So Snookabooka, we're going to start with the freshman year. What are some of the big moments that you remember from my freshman year at UConn? Okay, well, I think you only maybe lost, oh, let me not do that. My mind might not be right, but you made the made it to the Elite Eight in your freshman year, and it was in Bridge, Bridgeport, Connecticut. One of the memories I have is when you played uh, uh, Duke that game. We were at that game. We were almost at all of her uh, end of tournament games except one. But anyway, we were in Bridgeport, Connecticut, and Renee was playing, uh, and Allison Bales was one of the Duke players, and she used to play with us a play with us a little bit with the Tornadoes, our AAU team. And she's six foot five. And so, you know, this is the sectionals we're trying to get to the tournament. Uh, well, it's actually the uh, Elite Eight. And so Allison, uh, Renee gets a steal, goes down. And so Allison is under the basket. And so Renee does a reverse layup. And Gino immediately calls a timeout. And, and so the announcer on the TV TV said, ladies and gentlemen, that's five foot six versus six foot five. <laughs> so that's and what you so... remember from that moment? I like that. That is hilarious because do you, you know, know what I remember? So funny. Do you know what I remember from but, that game? Well, do you remember that he that called game? the timeout to tell you that you weren't the one Dwayne Wade? <laughs> yes. So Coach oh, Ariam <laughs> oh, is a well, hilarious man. She was a man. freshman. <laughs> Yes, oh Coach R.M. is a hilarious man. So we're battling it out with Duke. Didn't Duke win that game? Didn't they beat us? Yeah, they did by two points. Remember, there was a decision that awesome. yes. everyone with the striped shirts had to make, and it wasn't yes. the one that we really wanted. So, uh, like, I'm telling you, you can't make this stuff up. We've seen now that sports is greater than reality. You can't make this stuff up. So my freshman year, we lose on a buzzer beater, right? Or mm-hmm. a buzzer beater that didn't count. We're playing... Duke basketball, which as y'all know, it's like UConn versus Duke Hmm. is a power five versus power five schools in that nature. It was a big game. It, you know, 
being honest, it was in Connecticut. So it was, we had a big crowd, we had a big stuff going on. And I just remember like, how in the world on my like on my freshman year do we start out and be the worst team for UConn losing in the Elite Eight? I thought that UConn was supposed to just make it to the Final Four like everybody was always saying. I'm thinking like, how in the world did we become that team that lost in the Elite Eight? So this is why I'm having Snook tell me her memories. And I'm going to tell y'all my memories because her sound is so beautiful. Number five, six going against six, five with the reverse <laughs> weight layup, like D Wade. It was in. Yeah. So that's my freshman year. Uh, what other, what other thoughts come from your, your, your mind for what's your second thought for freshman year? I should have a couple of them. Well, that freshman year was very, it was a learning experience for us. One of the things about the freshman year is the first time you are opportunity you get to go to first, uh, what is it? First, the first year thing they do for warm ups for the season. Oh, What's it called, first night? weekend, um, opening weekend or opening night. Opening where... weekend, uh -huh. and the parents can go watch the the warm ups and you know how they do their practices. It was grueling. I was so afraid for Renee after going. Okay, that so let's. Okay, this year. is good. Let me get into this. So, all right. So, first weekend is basically where the parents can come all weekend. They watch our practices. Then we have our opening practice that. A whole like you invite fans like UConn's opening night was sold out. I actually this most recent opening weekend, I actually was one of the hosts for it. So it was crazy. It was sold out in there. The band was in there. It's like it's a whole event. It's just like a yeah, game, except for it's your first day's practice. So Snook and them come to our first practice. And basically, she got to see what that action looked like. And what was your thought, Snook? I said, Lord, have mercy. Lord, help them. That's all I can think. <laughs> Cause it was grueling. I mean, really, it wasn't. It wasn't anything. But you really had to be a good athlete and be in tip top shape to be able to go out there and survive in that. I mean, really. I mean, it was time stuff. I mean, it wasn't any playing around. It was like serious business. Serious. serious. So listen, um, Coach Ariema has even alluded to this recently about how he basically made the statement and coach is so good at motivating because he said the players aren't the same as they used to. And we don't coach the same as we used to. Now, I think the players, you know, they're still great players in college basketball. I know he was just trying to get his team hyped up, but I don't think that UConn can probably coach the way that they used to coach our practices. <laughs> when I tell you times have changed. And so things that was acceptable then, and I'm not saying that we had any like un cruel and unusual punishment. I'm just saying like, it was a no nonsense, no excuse type of thing. If they say you need to cross the line in 10 seconds, it don't matter if you're a point guard or a center, you better cross the line in 10 seconds or we're going to redo people it. Dove, people dove for that line. That clock was ticking, mm. ticking, ticking. They dove, <laughs> dove like, like a door that. Into a pool. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, you know, know like <laughs> nowadays you might not be able to run people until they literally make it because there might be players that fall out there might be players that throw up there might be players that cry and say that they can't you know if you throw up i've seen players do that all the time that ain't nothing but a thing you better get back on the line and get be ready to run the next one track practice at at um for aau track or travel track whatever you want to say basically our coach would say you could throw up, but don't throw up on my track. Once oh, you throw oh up, God. get back on there and Go. keep running. Did he not? Did he yeah. not say, oh, I don't wow. care what you do. Striders. But... Striders, yes. Yeah, striders. Yeah, so we... We, the yeah, trick is to throw you? up on yourself. The trick is to get some on your show. Oh, coach, I gotta go change. Oh no! Gotta, oh no! There was, no there was no changing. There was no changing. There was a hose. They had a hose oh, there. Wow. Hose you off. It was it was hot outside. Wow. First of all, it's it's August. Wow. It's hot. Hose yourself off. You'll dry out as you run. Ooh. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So it's that type. It's them type of vibes brutal, where man. there's no there's basically no out. It's like you gonna get this work right. Like there's no out. So that's kind of what, so Snook, when she was saying, you know, Roy put in the chat, thy rod and thy staff, they come for me. Snook started, to, <laughs> Snook started to pray for her baby girl when she started to see what it was about to be like. But let's move on to sophomore. She's seeing Sylvia. She's seeing, <laughs> she's seeing being Sylvia out there. Hold on, my son down. Hold on. <laughs> she saw who I had to go up against because you're right, Juju. We did play LSU one tournament. Snook, oh, what yeah. are your thoughts on our sophomore, my sophomore year? What what comes to mind that year? Okay, well, as you said before, people go to UConn with expectations, and when you get there, Gino has expectations. So, uh, you know, you feel that you're going to go all the way. So we always try to prepare ourselves to, 
to be there. And what was it I always told you, told you, Renee, that we were always sitting where? In the front row, baby. And anytime she played right. the still, game, they still said, like that. We're in the front row. So what she means by that, by the way, is she means that she's going to be front and center in front of the TV. If she ain't at the game in the front row, she's going to be in front of the TV in the front row. So she would always just tell me that. So what are so, your thoughts sophomore year? So you, so you made it to the um, Elite Eight again in the sophomore year. And I was very disappointed because I felt that we weren't there to kind of push you because it was out in Fresno, California. So we didn't oh. make that trip because the mm. Final Four that year, I believe, was in Cleveland, Ohio. So we knew if you won, you'd be coming back to Cleveland. And that was a short five-hour drive for us. But so anyway. let me talk to y'all about disappointment. <clears throat> so my whole family... California is too far to go, obviously. So my family, like Snook talks about, they go to all of my games, like, <clears throat> excuse me, that are within reasonable where they can drive or get a trip. This so happened to be in California. So they couldn't make it to this game, but they were planning on making it to the final four because we were supposed to make it to the final four. So everybody was setting up for plans and trips to go to Cleveland, Ohio. They were like, it's perfect. It's so close to home. I'm, you know, we're from West Virginia. And so all I got to do is get there. And all I got to do is get to the final four and it's going to be turned up. Cause I mean, I got family in Ohio. We got family in West Virginia. Cole and them are coming from Maryland. It ain't nothing but a thing. Here's what we go and do, losing the Elite Eight in Fresno, and not only disappoint ourselves and our season and our fans, but now our family didn't even make the trip because they was all planning and taking weekends off and planning on taking time off from work to go to Cleveland. So I want to tell y'all how athletes really be feeling after the loss. It ain't even just the loss where we gave our blood, sweat, and tears, and we wanted to win. It ain't just the fans that was behind us, the coaching staff. Then it's the other personal things where it's like, dang, people took off of work for us. Well, we wouldn't have known if he was okay anyway, because I don't think we even heard from you from a solid week. <laughs> I was going to say, how do you deal with that? Like, I, I, I want to know. So Juju, with the foreshadowing, my second year, my sophomore year, when I talk about LSU was some, like, dogs over there they had sylvia fowles i think simone augustus i don't know if she was still there simone they had some shooters they were just they were i mean like that's what i have to tell people when i say we won one time when i was in college i'm so proud of that one because that duke team we lost to had some dogs on that team we lost to lsu the next year where obviously we know now there's a statue of simone going up at lsu that's how to tell you how good she is they putting up a whole statue of the woman on campus and i feel like part of my tears is in that statue because that's when they knocked us out my sophomore year but to answer your question babe the way that i handle that type of trauma when we lose after giving it everything is i don't want to talk i don't want to talk to nobody like cole said i didn't talk to nobody for like a week I'm good. I'll be okay. I just don't want to talk about that moment until I'm okay. So, mm. yeah. And what I are you just, doing within that week when you don't talk to anybody? You I'm just watching like all seclusion. of the play. She's in deep seclusion. Deep yeah, I'm seclusion. watching. I go rewatch the game and watch all the mistakes that I made and how I could have done better. Then I talk bad about myself to myself for a very long time. Then I'll probably go work out and then start the cycle of I can't let myself be that bad again next year. It's really, you know, it's probably not healthy, but it's probably also the most healthiest way that athletes get better because you take your loss and you just bottle it up and eat it and swallow it and drink it. And then you just come back out motivated. Yeah. So that's kind of the cycle. What else? What else? What are you saying, Cole? We literally were watching on TV. Me, I'm the type of person where I got to the moment where it was too close and I like, I can't take it. I was on the floor, my head on the ground. I'm like, Lord, please. And the Shay's like, you got to watch it. And then when it was over, bah, game over and they lost, I said, I called Ma, I said, well, we won't, I guess we'll talk to her next week. <laughs> Mom was like, yeah, I guess so. We just kind of do, just leave it alone. That's that on that. Snooka Booker, what, what else you got for sophomore year? Anything else for sophomore year? We move into um, junior. No, I was just going to say about your, how you um, deal with losses. You're usually going to seclusion for a while, and everyone knows do not knock on the door. No, she doesn't want any food. No, she doesn't want a hug or a kiss. No, she doesn't don't, want anyone can't to even tell mention you it. you did great. You know, she don't want to hear that either. Leave her don't say that. Alive. Definitely don't tell me I did <laughs> don't great. Don't tell that's me I did my, great. I hate that's that. That's one of my too, things. Oh, I did so great that we're home right now for the Elite Eight. Like, <laughs> what you want me? 
<laughs> you did great. Like what? I'm a loser. That's my thing. It's like, no, I can't. I'm a, like, I'm a, not a great loser. So there's that. Um, I mean, like I'm not bad to other people, but I'm really bad to myself when I don't do well. And so that's kind of why I'm a workaholic now because I don't like to disappoint people and I don't like to not do well. And I don't like that feeling. So I just try to overwork so that I don't ever have to be in that, in that mode. So yeah. There's, there's no I and loser. So we win <laughs> together and we all lose together. Got your back. All right. Listen, I feel like we got to start rapping, but should we to be continued on junior and senior year, get to the good times later? Cause right now we're stuck in the elite eight, let the bad times roll. Maybe I need to just, <laughs> maybe I need to just fester in this and think on this because March madness is all month. And so maybe next week we'll come back with my junior and senior year where there is some light at the end of the tunnel people. And so for the UConn fans that feel like these five games that we've lost this season on the women's side, I know this is a tough year for us because I feel like in my whole career, I don't know how many games I've lost my whole career, but I think at CBS, we just um, talked about I think about it was this. 11. I think they said 11. So I lost 11 games in four years. So I know that for UConn fans using losing five games in one season feels like a lot. We just have to realize that there's a certain standard that we have for UConn that in this world of parody, that may not be the normal standard anymore. And so I'm reliving the trauma. Oh, Roy Lord. just wrote, yeah, fester for a week. Go fester. fester. For a I'm going to go fester for a week and think <laughs> the about last this. Two years of- <laughs> Okay, but there's light at the end of yes. the tunnel for the last two years. But man, Duke, I still haven't forgiven y'all. Monique Billy, I mean, Monique Curry and all of y'all. LSU, Simone, we supposed to be dogs. Put Put was on the show, a friend of the show, <laughs> Sylvia Fowl, man. Yes. There's only one person that can win. So that's the thing about March Madness. There's but the then Cinderella. you guys came back years later and won a championship together. Spoiler alert, you know. By but... our powers combined. <laughs> Me, Sylvia Fowles. Simone Augustus, Maya Moore was my teammate at UConn. All of us have competed together against each other in in March Madness. That's the beauty of it all because who we're watching right now compete against each other, we're seeing the UConn players. Tennessee and South Carolina went at it for the SEC title. We're seeing all of these players go at it, but these players are probably going to eventually be teammates at some point down the line, which is the dope part of it all. So, boy, the madness continues. Shouts to all the Cinderella's. Get, Get your, your brackets, brackets together. together. Oh, we Shall- should do one against uh, yes. amongst us. Yes. Let's do it. We're gonna yes. do a Moco bracket challenge to see who wins against the crew. Who won it's last year? I think. I think that was last year. Last year. Yes. Oh, so Snook got some. I think Paul <laughs> won, didn't he? Oh, we need. Oh, we need some push-ups, then Snook. Yes. I mean, for this season. <laughs> 20. I'm not That's losing 20. this year. Oh, I'm not I'm losing this year. this year. So look, it's already starting to happen. The competitive juices are flowing. I love it here, man. We're going to see y'all next week and talk about the junior and senior year. Some light at the end of the tunnel. Now, having heard all of those memories, it I, yeah, I'm feeling a little nostalgia, but overall, I talk about it. That 2%. That's what UConn gave me, that 2% of extra work, that 2%, because only 2% of athletes go pro, as we know. And so UConn gave me that 2%. And I just think about all those various moments, but the overall feeling that I feel when I think about UConn is the friends that I made there, the family that we are now. And so, you know, I'm so excited for players to be able to be going through that right now, because when I think about all the memories, the blood, sweat, and tears, because there was a lot of tears. I'm going to tell you that right now. We won my senior year, but a lot of tears, but I'm glad to have ended it with a smile. You already know, it's a generational thing here at MoCo.